Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And this is a follow-up to my recent tutorial in which we looked at an improved routine for creating depth blur. Now, if you haven't watched that tutorial, this one is not going to make a lot of sense. So please go back and watch it so you can understand what's happening here. So the process that I showed you was obviously an improvement, but it still didn't fix an outstanding problem. And I want to show you what that problem is here. You can probably see very clearly from these two images. So over here on the left, we've got the fusion depth blur. And over here on the right is the routine that I showed you in that tutorial. And you can very clearly see, especially here with the fusion one, we've got this hard edge gap where we actually want everything to be smooth and blurred. We zoom in, you can see we've got a hard edge to whatever's going on there. And the same thing is true of my version, only just slightly less so. And what we're gonna be doing in this tutorial is looking at a method for eliminating that problem. And if we look at the example I've made, that's what we're gonna be doing. You can see that that problem has been fixed here and it's looking much better. So how are we gonna go about that? Well, we're actually gonna to have to rebuild the Rack Focus tool that we built last time with a small variation. I've brought my 3D scene into a new composition. As I mentioned before, it's got a Z channel that we can use for this depth blur operation. So the first thing we're going to do is add a custom tool and we're going to pipe the scene into the custom tool. And I just want to come over to the config and I'm going to quickly just run through this, uh, just disable all the numbers apart from the first two. I'm going to rename those as focal point and depth and then I'm just going to disable the other controls as well. So then when we, when we come back to the controls, they're looking like this. And I'm just going to set this up so it's got the same values as we had in our example. So it's going to be negative 36 there and five there. It's all going to depend on what your scene is, but this is just to set, get us going. So I'm going to come over to the intermediate tab and I'm going to enter the following expression. So open brackets, negative Z1 plus N1 plus N2, close brackets, divided by N2. And then I'm going to come to channels and I'm going to type I1 into the red field and then I'm going to copy and paste it into the other three channels. So that's what we've now got. So that is now going to be our near control when we're finished with it. So I'm just going to relabel this as near. Then I'm going to take this custom tool and I'm going to copy and paste it. I'm going to rename this as mat. I'm going to take the scene output into the image one input of the mat and I'm going to take the near output into the image two input. And I just need to link up these two new controls. So let's right click, add expression, and we're going to type near dot number capital I N one. And then let's just copy that and then add an expression to the depth, paste it and set that to number two. So now the near controls are going to control the, the mat as well. So then let's come over to the intermediate tab and delete this expression and enter a new one. So what we're going to have here is open brackets Z1 minus N1, close brackets divided by minus N2. Then what we need to do is we need to invert the near input. So I'm going to type in intermediate two, one minus R2. We could use any of the channels from the near because of how we set it up, but let's just use the red channel. So then what we need to do is take the maximum of those two values. So that's max open brackets I1 comma I2 close brackets. So this is intermediate three. And finally in intermediate four, we need to clamp the result. So min open brackets max open brackets I3 comma zero close brackets comma one close brackets. Then we can come over to channels and we can just use I4 for all of those four channels. And then if we look at our result, you can see we've got our mat back. So we can use this for the blur. But again, it's very obvious that we've got that, that problem of those sharp edges that are going to give us that anomaly in the middle there. So to resolve that anomaly, and this is why we split off the operation into two separate custom tools, is that we want to filter this near output. So the first tool we're going to add is an erode dilate, and then we're going to add a blur. And I'm going to call the erode dilate 
simply erode, it makes life easier like that. And I'm going to link the blur to the erode amount. So you can see that this is called erode.x amount. So we can link the blur to it like this. Right click, add an expression to the blur. And we're going to type erode.x amount. But we actually want to multiply it by negative a thousand like this. And then if we come to the erode amount control and we reduce that a bit, you can see we're starting to sort out that problem. So let's now add a defocus tool. We can take our mat and make it the effect mask input of the defocus. And if we give ourselves a bit of space here, we can take the scene input into the defocus and we can look at the result. We obviously need to look at the color and we need to set up the defocus. So I'm going to kill the bloom level and I'm going to set the defocus size to 30. And you can see how we've sorted that out. We've got that nice resolution to that problem there. Let's take a slightly closer look and then just adjust our erode amount till it's correct. So in this particular case, I know that negative 0.015 is going to be exactly right or as close to exactly right as, as we need it to be. If we switch the focus to this far ball here, that's negative 51 approximately. Let's come over to the controls, negative 51. And you can see that's nicely in focus. Everything is out of focus. If we bypass our road and blur, you can see we've got that problem back. We've got this sort of slot here that we don't, we actually want to be blurred, but isn't. But this little routine here, takes care of it. And as before, I'll give you a link to download a macro of this routine in case that's useful to you. So thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.